Whether you're at the death of a salesman stand or just curious to check it out, we're here to shed some light on the Broadway revival of a classic play. Welcome back to Innovative Theatrics. I'm Steven, and I'll be telling you about the latest play to hit Broadway. Well, not like the latest play because it's a revival. To get things started, I'm going to tell you about the plot. Death of a Salesman is the story about the last few days of the life of Willie Loman. If you're worried that I spoiled the ending, it's legit in the title of the play. Willie is now in his 60s and has spent over three decades working as a salesman. Willie's son is out of work and realizing that he is slowly running out of options. Linda is Willie's wife, who unconditionally supports her husband through the most trying days. Throughout the play, he is haunted by visions of the past and happier days. At the heart of the story is the bond of the American family and the tragedy that happens when you place your own values and principles on someone instead of allowing them to explore their own identity. The play was originally written in 1949 by American playwright Arthur Miller. Fun fact, he was married to Marilyn Monroe. The original production opened February 10th, 1949, starring Lee J. Cobb as Willie Loman. The show has gone on to have four Broadway revivals, starring George C. Scott in the 1975 version, Dustin Hoffman in 1984, Brian Dennehy in 1999, and Philip Seymour Hoffman in 2012. The current revival features a predominantly black cast with Wendell Pierce as the starring role. The 2022 production began preview performances on September 17th and opens on October 9th, unless you're in the future and it's already open. This production is an open-ended run, which means that the show currently has no closing date. This innovative revival is playing at the newly renovated and gorgeous Hudson Theater. Another fun fact, it is the oldest operating Broadway theater. The production is directed by Miranda Cromwell, while Playbell also credits Marianne Elliott as the original Young Vic and West End co-director. Okay, so we gotta talk about merch because who doesn't love a souvenir when you're on vacation? I'll preface this with the fact that I observed the second preview performance, so there wasn't much merch out yet, and the vendor told me that there is more merch arriving to the theater this coming week. So I gotta admit, there's not much to report on. They had your standard show shirt depicting the show logo on the front, and on the back, it was just black. You can get this tee for $30. They also offered a hoodie and crew neck shirt displaying the logo on the front. On the back, they had the text, anyone can sell the American dream, can everyone own it? Both of these items will set you back 60 bucks. Finally, they offered a yellow tote bag with red text reading, attention must be paid. The show's most iconic line. This bag is small. If you were to wear it around your shoulder, it would come to about your waistline. So not really ideal for grocery shopping or anything. This will cost you $10. Like I said, they're coming out with new merch, such as a magnet, which is expected to arrive this week. So by the time you make it to the theater, you should have an expanded set of options. Okay, so everyone wants a good deal, but where do you go to find it? I always suggest trying to purchase tickets at the theater box office itself. Nothing is more annoying than committing to that $150 price tag and then going to checkout to see that a $24 telecharge service fee is tacked on there. Well, you can avoid this misfortune by visiting the theater in person and paying a very small $2 to $3 facility fee. There are other apps such as Today Ticks, which offer purchasing tickets on your couch. But Today Ticks also has a rush at 9 a.m. every day of the performance. If you're lucky enough to snag one of these rush tickets, then you could get some awesome seats for only $43. As you can see, I sat in the second row from the center of the dress circle, which is really the mezzanine. I'm not really sure why they call it that. Now, is this show worth seeing? For a bite-sized review of this show and others, you'll have to head over to Instagram at innovative underscore theatrics to know a little bit more about the production. And while you're there, go ahead and follow so that you can never miss a review and get the latest on what's hot on Broadway. And I'm not just talking about some like it hot. Spoiler alert, it's a positive review. If you made it this far, then you clearly like what you see, so go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And also, hit that subscribe button so you can get all the latest. We have a ton of musicals and plays opening this fall with 1776, Piano Lessons, and Juliet, K-Pop the Musical. Y'all, this just might be the renaissance of Broadway, and ah, I can't wait to share all the joy of these shows with you. I'm Steven for Innovative Theatrics, and I hope you go out there and create something new.